The joy of living, really the joy of living, is to see another person respond to your thought of love and well-being. The transformation <clears throat> of myself as a rational scientist to a spiritual scientist. The moment I thought I could influence a plant, I could modify the growth of a crystal, I could accelerate the growth of a tree. We are given <clears throat> by the love of God the power of creative thinking. That was number one. Number two <clears throat> was in India, where I was taken by Swami Vishnu Devananda and <clears throat> brought to the sacred mountain in Trivandrum. And the power of that mountain <clears throat> entered my body, and I had a total Kundalini experience in the sense that I was lifted out of body brought into <clears throat> a multi-layer of consciousness. <clears throat> and as I came back, I asked, why was I subjected to this experience? I mean, my body was burning from head to foot. I was a mass of energy, of fire. The Kundalini fire, my friends, is very, very real. I experienced it. Your body burns. Your skin is ice cold, but you feel like you have a massive sunburn. <clears throat> and then a voice spoke, and it said, you are to ignite the flame. I had to make a commitment back in 1974 that I would create and bring into being again the teaching on crystals. I fought it. I didn't want to get involved in a methodology that was so foreign to the matter and pattern of operation that I have done throughout my life. To study esoteric knowledge is to go into the teaching of Tibetan mysticism, all the forms of occultism. It angered my dear wife. She said to me, in great love, darling, why do you get into this? Why are you involving things in something that you really have developed a skill inventory that you can carry for the rest of your life? Why do you go into it? In truth, I could not answer her. I had to go deeper. The path was not clear. I had to walk in darkness for many, many years and walk against the path my family wanted me to be, a scientist, the technical people around me were drifting away. What sustained me was the love I had for Christ. And that, if this is what he wanted me to do, I was willing to give my life to it. And I almost did twice. I was at the point of death a few years ago now with a heart attack. And I did not know whether I truly wanted to continue living on this earth plane or not. I tried so hard to pass on the technology, both from a scientific and technical standpoint within IBM, and then I moved out into the esoteric circles and tried to pass on this knowledge and technology of the use of crystals. Equal, falling away, rejection, ridicule, my heart started to falter. I had an angina attack. I was in the hospital. I'd received the last sacraments. 
I turned around where the priest was there, and I said, Dear Jesus, I give you my life. That is all I had yet to give. Suddenly, the figure of Christ appeared, whole, complete, with beautiful white robes, the dark beard of the people of his time. He's a tall man. A beautiful red shawl over his shoulders. He was turning away from me, and suddenly his face looked at me squarely. And I heard these voices, the voice speaking. I, too, have known rejection. And he faded. That sustained me. If Christ had to experience that, I too now am willing to take whatever comes, face it, and put it in the hands of mankind, as I am now doing to you.